recognize is the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Immigration and Border Security, the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Lofkin, for her opening statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me start by commending the author of this bill, my friend from California, Mr. Issa, and the committee chairman for a great deal of what is in this bill. A lot of its provisions are near and dear to me, partly because they mirror provisions in the IDEA Act that I introduced last Congress and because I have been championing them for years. These provisions include green cards for advanced degree graduates in STEM from America's finest research universities, green cards for immigrant entrepreneurs who receive venture capital financing for startup businesses, improvements to the prevailing wage requirement for H-1B workers and employment-based immigrants, elimination of the per-country limits for employment-based immigrants, and the raising of funds to improve STEM education and training in the United States. As I represent Silicon Valley, I know the great good that these provisions can do. I see on a first-hand basis the new technologies, the new companies, and the new jobs that foreign STEM graduates and immigrant entrepreneurs create every day at home. There is no question that we should improve the ability for such persons to come and stay in our country. But unfortunately, this bill, as currently written, is flawed. I want to be clear, if the bill did not include unrelated provisions eliminating the diversity and sibling categories, I would be celebrating much in this bill. I would want to make certain tweaks and add a few provisions, but I would be celebrating it. But I cannot celebrate it as it currently stands. As Ranking Member Conyers indicated in his opening statement, this bill takes a zero-sum approach that sets a terrible precedent for fully addressing our broken immigration system. It gives to some only by taking away from others, and it th thus sets immigrant communities against each other. There is a better way. My colleagues may point to the fact that the Senate bill also eliminates the diversity and sibling categories, but there is a giant difference between that bill and the bill we are considering today. First, as we all know, the bill in the Senate is a comprehensive bill that has a great deal for immigrant families and minorities to celebrate. The bill provides a path to permanent residency for undocumented immigrants. It addresses decades-long green card backlogs for all family-based immigrants. It provides age-out protections for immigrant children. It creates other channels for immigrants from Africa. And even though it eliminates the sibling category, it expedites their entry while continuing to honor all currently approved sibling petitions. Second, the Senate bill actually fixes a great deal of what is wrong in the employment-based immigration system. While H.R. 2131 helps alleviate some of the problems in that system, it falls far short of providing a long-term fix. Most importantly, the number of green cards provided in H.R. 2131 is far from sufficient to fully address employment-based backlogs. Even if the bill was enacted, years-long backlogs would continue to exist for American employers seeking to hire foreign talent. And because of the bill's large increase in temporary H-1B visas, green card backlogs would actually get worse as larger numbers of H-1B workers seen, seek green cards to remain permanently in the U.S. Thus, H.R. 2131 would fail to fully address our broken employment-based immigration system while at the same time doing tremendous damage to our family and diversity-based immigration systems. And as I noted earlier, adoption of the bill's zero-sum approach, if carried forward, would prevent future fixes to further address employment and family-based green card backlogs. Instead of providing what this nation desperately needs, namely a top-to-bottom solution that fixes our broken immigration system, I believe H.R. 2131 would ensure the continued dysfunction of the immigration uh, system. As I did last year when we considered the STEM jobs, ask, uh, jobs Act, I ask why we can't simply consider a bill to fix our employment-based immigration system without doing damage to other immigrant categories. It didn't have to be this way. We could be considering a clean bill that doesn't contain extraneous and divisive provisions. That would get my full support. But I can't support a standalone measure that seeks to offset visas in this fashion, a bill that takes green cards away from one person to give it to another. That said, I will close by saying that I hope to work m with my friends on the other side of the aisle to hopefully make changes to this bill so that I can support it and other Democrats can as well. We must move beyond the politics of zero-sum immigration. Those politics are holding America's continued prosperity 
hostage. We must get beyond tired old arguments that pit one group of deserving immigrants against another. I stand ready to work with my colleagues on the other side of the aisle to do the hard work to fix our broken immigration system and to fix this bill. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.